The most magical aspect about this mop is mop cleaning. Ooh, wow. With this one, you can literally see its mopping attachment scrubbing the floor. Uh -huh. I would say after using it for two months, this mop is certainly not for everyone. So I finally pulled the trigger and purchased this expensive thousand dollar robo mop about two months ago. So I thought I'd make a video about it and share my honest thoughts as someone who loves to spend time researching and reading reviews. Except this is not really a review because let's be honest here, you've probably watched plenty of these reviews already. So instead, I thought I would focus on answering three key questions that I had before I hit the purchase button. And hopefully my answers to these questions will help you make a decision as well. First one, is it worth it? Okay, so I get it. If you look at the sticker price, it is a thousand dollar. I think I got mine when it was on sale for $7.99 which helped a little, but it still hurt. But last time I checked it, I believe the sale is still on, so I'll link wherever I got mine down below. And hopefully you can take advantage of this discounted price if you're interested. I do think it's helpful to think through it from a cost per use perspective. That's how you'll actually see the cost of owning an item. In my case, I've been using this mop pretty much every other day for the two months I've had it so far. And if the mop still works after two years, you're looking at give or take $2 per mop, which is not bad at all, right? And if you look at the alternative, such as hiring a cleaning person, last time I checked the price, it was about $200 for a two hour cleaning in the area that I live in, which is crazy. But I know they definitely clean all around the house and do more than just basic mopping. But still, I think if you are someone that enjoy keeping your house clean, this is actually a good deal as long as it's still functioning after two years. You see, the key here really is the ability to keep using this, which brings me to my second question. Who is this mop for? I would say after using it for two months, this mop is certainly not for everyone. So I'll talk about who is this mop not for first. Number one, this mop is not for somebody who wants a vacuum mop combo. I am not familiar with the technical specs, but I've tried the vacuum myself and it doesn't work. I personally have a Roborock right next to me and I use that for vacuum only, even though Roborock also has a mopping attachment and it sucks. So I think having one dedicated vacuum and another dedicated mop, in this case, my Marvel Robo Mop, is actually a really good combo because they do what they do best. But again, going back to my original point, if you're looking for a vacuum mop combo, this one, at least it's vacuum capabilities, you're gonna get disappointed. My second point is that this mop is not for someone who lives in a small space or someone who hasn't thought of a dedicated space to put this mop in. I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm sitting on the floor. This mop is pretty tall. It's definitely substantial if you were to put it somewhere in a room. For example, right now, I actually put it in my spare room. But anyways, it feels and looks really nice, but you definitely wanna find a proper space to put this item. And my third point in terms of who is this mop not for, it's probably a given, but I thought I'd mention it anyways, which is if you live on multiple floors, um, you have like two stories, you're probably looking at having one dedicated mop per floor, which can get quite expensive, right? So it's probably a better deal if you're someone who lives in a one-story house. And then moving on to who is this mop for, I think this mop is perfect for someone who wants a hands-off experience. And I mean that literally. The most magical aspect about this mop is you no longer have to hand wash the mops yourself. Or if you're like mopping the floor yourself, you are going back and forth between the sink, get water, wash the mop, dump water, you know the drill, right? And it gets pretty boring. I would say that's one of the biggest reasons why I personally hate mopping. And with this little guy, it does truly clean its own mop head attachment really, really well. And I would also attest to its cleaning performance. I've had, like I said, I have a Roborock that comes with its own like mopping attachment. And <laughs> I hesitate to call it mopping because it's essentially dragging a wet rug across the room. <laughs> I wouldn't call this mopping because that, that's not how you mop, right? Versus with this one, you can literally see its mopping attachment scrubbing the floor. And you will also be able to feel it yourself. Being Asian, I'm not one that, that will walk around the house barefoot, 
but sometimes I do like to do that and then I can tell it does a really good job because my feet is not dirty <laughs> okay so this is what I'm starting out with as you can see there's a lot a lot a lot of long hair this is after three times of mopping this area which took about just six minutes I'm really happy with the result and last but not least there is a clean and waste water tank and it's so satisfying for me personally it might sound gross to you to see the dirty water tank coming out with like grayish water um, it, it means it's doing its job Another aspect that I really haven't heard a lot of people talk about is its ability to not get detangled up during its cleaning. I haven't really owned that many, but I've had iRobot, Roborock, the one that I currently have. It gets detangled all the time or stuck somewhere that when I return home, I'm just like, why are you stuck here, right? Like, aren't you supposed to be intelligent? <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyway, that I don't use some of these mops as often and it's because it always get detangled or sometimes like suction some of the items in that I don't want it to be suctioned into, for example, my hair ties and my cables, etc. With this mop, this never happens. I think part of the reason is definitely it being a mop that uh, it's not actively trying to suction things into its waste tank, right? Um, but I actually think this is one of the key reasons why I've been able to use it every other day because it's just so worry-free, right? Like, <laughs> I can comfortably set up a schedule and just let it go around my house without having to worry about, oh my god, what if my hair tag gets stuck in there? What if it like starts screaming at me at 7 a.m. in the morning that I have to get out of the bed to like rescue it? Anyway, you get my point. If you, if you struggle with your robot getting stuck, I... Well, I can't guarantee, but at least like according to my experience, this never happens with the Naro Robomob, which is a huge plus in terms of being able to use it very often. Last but not least, and again, one point that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about is it is very, very quiet. My Roborock, I only turn it on like during the morning because I literally cannot have it on even when I'm cooking because it's that loud. Or I guess I'm just relatively maybe more sensitive to uh, noises. This one is very quiet. I could probably be okay with it running in the background at like 12 a.m. when I'm trying to get to bed or 1 a.m. if we're being realistic here. Anyways, um, being quiet is actually really important. It helps me use it more often because it's so worry-free. I can just like let it run in the background and, and actually rely on its scheduled cleaning feature. Now onto the third question that I had before I hit the purchase button is, I want to ask someone who had this robot, what would you have liked in this robot? Um, I would say for me personally, I would have loved a mop only or vacuum only map. This is especially important if you have a rug somewhere in the living room that you obviously don't want the mop to get onto, but then you also want the vacuum to try and you know, suction some of the dirt out. Um, it would be really helpful if we could have two separate maps that we can maintain that you can set dedicated no-go zones for the mop or the vacuum separately. Now, I get why Nervo hasn't implemented something like this, and it's probably due to something we call cannibalization. One of the key features in their newest model, which is yet a couple hundred more expensive than this, I guess now older model, is the ability for the machine to raise this mop. So in a sense, during its vacuum, you are not dragging a wet mop onto your carpet, for example, right? Um, I think this can easily be solved if they just allow us to have dedicated map, one for mop and one for a vacuum, right? <laughs> and, you know, if I had to guess, the reason why Narvo hasn't implemented it is because they want you to pay the money to <laughs> purchase the newest model, right? And speaking of no-go zones, I would have loved for this mob to suggest no-go zones because when I first had a map around my house, I thought that it got stuck underneath my dishwasher for whatever reason. So, you know, if you, if you have a dishwasher like that, it's possible that it might get stuck under yours as well. I would have liked for it to just like automatically suggest, hey, do you want to fence out this area? Because when I go back to the map and do it, I don't know how big or how small, how far stretch I should have the no-go zone. And it would be really helpful if the app can suggest that. 
Um, speaking of the app, I have a lot of feedback for the app. I never thought that I would dislike a smart home device, if you will, for its app because I'm one of those that like don't want to mess around with the app too much. I really just want the machine to do its job. But in this case, I think the app experience is sucky enough for me to like you know not enjoy this mob as much right and i've heard other i guess western reviewers mention the app's performance mostly come from the differences in terms of chinese versus um, western apps i have used myself a lot of chinese apps and i i think it's safe to say it's not bad this app simply is half-baked <laughs> so for example if i were to schedule a cleaning and i left the house and i come back I, you know, obviously you want to know if the cleaning has completed, right? There is no notification. If you were to re-enter the app, you see nothing or things like mm, notifications about water tank. So for context, a full clean water tank will get me around, you know, either a thousand to fifteen hundred square feet of cleaning, give or take. Um, I would have liked if it can at least tell me, hey, like your water tank is running low. And even if this is like more nicer to have features, I think one thing that is really bugging me in terms of the app is its room division capabilities. It's not a deal breaker, but it really doesn't work well for someone who has a open concept living room and kitchen setup like mine, because the app actually doesn't allow you to divide rooms unless there's a door. And obviously, if you have a very standard, not weird <laughs> layout, you will probably be just fine. But if you have any like open concept spaces where you, you know, might want to, in my case, clean the kitchen more often and the living room less often, or just, you know, have, have like different schedules for these two spaces, you will not be able to do that. <laughs> it's not an easy fix, but it's definitely something that Narwhal's team can consider addressing with this app. Okay, so I know I didn't end this video on a high note, but based on how much I've used the mob in the past two months, I feel really comfortable recommending this mob for someone who is lazy, who wants solid mopping performance, and obviously go back to the video to see if any of the who is this mob not for section applies to you. Otherwise, I think this is a solid buy. I would recommend it. And once again, if you enjoyed this review, I would really love for you to like it and comment down below. Oops. <laughs> All right. I think I got to go because it's turning on, but I really enjoy making this video and consider using my link if you want to support me and I'll see you next time.